From the author that has appeared in Harvard, Business Week, TechCrunch, VentureBeat, and GigaOM, it's Larry Chiang. The super entrepreneurship model exposed, expanded, and explained involves basically seeing that there are actually two chasms. The dotted line chasm is the area that you as a newbie founder would be working. The dotted line chasm makes you think, oh, we're gonna die trying to cross that chasm in the dotted line region. And the net net effect is doing a, uh, realizing that there's a larger chasm that surrounds and encapsulates you and you're trying to use the energy that is nearby you're trying to leverage things that already have momentum that's what eu twm ppm uh had and that's why we're editing the startup because the original people that are trying to cross a chasm were not able to see the larger chasm remember you're editing a dead startup you're editing a cadaver and there are three significant things to pay attention to with this tweet. One, hashtag CS23YC. Two, what Uber cab is this the Uber technologies of? Three, CS23E. Now, if you look at the purple part of the chasm, the purple dotted line part, that's engineering 145. That's your startup. So what surrounds it is a chasm within a chasm. And that's what a super entrepreneurship model is, is it leverages momentum that is all around us. Just like a Jedi, where there's energy all around us, do you leverage gravity? Or is it working against you? Are you trying to get to escape velocity, whereas gravity is working against you? This chasm within a chasm is the end-all be-all of lecture 13, which sounds a little crazy, but there's a chasm that encapsulates the chasm and it's going to expand in a hurry. So, so the, the diagram that you need to, to write down and to draw and to internalize is to realize that there's a lot more momentum to your cadaver, to your startup than you ever would imagine. And you overlay it with something that is related that is a technology that has already been adopted. So you're trying to leverage momentum. You're trying to DJ momentum. You're trying to engineer up a tidal wave of momentum. Does any of these things sound familiar? They should because it's EU TWM PPM. It's crossing the chasm from the right. That last set that last picture, that last slide, had a lot going on with it. So let's start from the, not necessarily the beginning, but let's set a platform, let's set a, uh, a, an understanding that this is the chasm, this is the dotted line area, this is an engineering 145 technology entrepreneurship Stanford engineering class, hashtag ENGR145. So you've got a dotted line, and to the left of the chasm is you have early adopters and uh, technology enthusiasts. To the right, you have Main Street, and startups die, and they get given up on in the middle part, the chasm, where there's not enough traction, there's not enough adoption, there's not enough distribution. Any of these things sound familiar as far as common things that kill a startup? Lack of distribution, lack of adoption, uh, lack of money, lack of traction. So all these things can be solved using this super model of entrepreneurship, super entrepreneurship model. And I know that the, the super douchey super model who's mentoring you on Stanford Engineering, when you in fact go to a lesser school like Harvard or an Ivy, Super entrepreneurship model is the practice of crossing the chasm from the right using a larger chasm that encapsulates a larger crossing the chasm that helps you get momentum by promoting existing products that tie into your product. And that's why the 
last graph, if you want to rewind that video, or actually I'm going to overlay this video too, which is what Uber cab is this the Uber technologies of? What Uber cab is this the Uber technologies of? That's supposed to be a wink wink, which I will show you, which is what Altair Basic is this the Microsoft of? What Altair Basic is this the Microsoft of? Because what Uber Cab is this the Uber Technologies of shows you that you can cross the chasm by doing something innovative by actually doing something old. That sounds oxymoronic, but I will lay out specific steps slide by slide. So this is exactly how to cross the innovation chasm, parentheses, from the right. Cross the chasm is Jeffrey Moore. He wrote that book in 1991. That is this graph. The next slides will explain what the super entrepreneurship model is frame by frame for your effort to edit CS183E. Altair Basic. So this graph is to emphasize that you want to mean and make a small number of people very happy. That's what the Altair Basic and that's what Altair Basic is this the Microsoft of. Meaning Altair Basic and the, the, the operating system for Altair Basic made a small number of people incredibly happy. And this is from a Paul Graham uh, post, Paul Graham essay, which is, what well, Altair Basic is this the Microsoft of? And the reason that that's important in this step-by-step -step super entrepreneurship model explained, defined, uh, broken down into itty bitty gritty is that I believe that Paul Graham actually didn't love Jeffrey Moore and they don't meet, they don't collaborate, they definitely didn't come up with the fifth epiphany which I wrote about at uh, the Boston area school. Fifth epiphany as in after fourth and before sixth. Fifth epiphany. So crossing the chasm is absolutely uh, important for survival. It's definitely integral when you're editing a startup. So when this, I saw this, what Altair Basic is this Microsoft of, when you flip the, the axes and then you change the points to a curve, that absolutely plugs into the chasm and crossing the chasm because it fulfills a huge in specific need, it makes a small number of people incredibly happy, which is the next upcoming slide. The points are now a curve, where the Altair is the cigar-shaped portion of it, and the, the popularity of Google is the, the larger bell curve portion of it. So flipping the points into a curve Changing the points into a curve and then flipping the axes emphasizes that you want to make a small number of people incredibly happy. And this diagram is one that you should actually draw out uh, because what you're going to do is you're going to help derive this theorem of crossing the chasm from the right. And I'm offering you a step by sequence on what Altair Basic is this from Microsoft of? And before that, if you want to rewind to the original slide, is what Uber Cab is this the Uber Technologies of? So this plugs in specifically into the chasm, which is helping, this is why you're editing, helping to get adoption and traction by realizing that the chasm, the innovation chasm, definitely kills startups. So when you flip the points into a curve, you're emphasizing and now you're integrating into crossing the chasm and the culmination of a future book by Jeffrey Moore, or a future collaboration by Paul Graham and Jeffrey Moore, which is cross the chasm from the right using the two chasm method, which I will then go into in the next sequence. This slide is incredibly uh, insightful in that Uber Black is the black town car Uber only used for black town cars start. So when Uber Cab was Uber Cab 
it was only black town cars. And the cab companies actually forced Uber to not use the word cab, which actually benefited it because it became eventually Uber Technologies. It delivers food, it does a lot of cool things, including Uber X. The reason that I wrote it on a Weston post-it note is that a lot of black town cars would be at a Weston and you could cut the cab line by just booking a town car using an Uber app. Mind blown, isn't it? Same thing with Salesforce. They crossed the chasm from the right by hosting events at the Westin. And now Uber, surprisingly, gives you SPG star points for using the SPG app to book an Uber, uh, which loads you up on SPG points and Uber credits. So, so this diagram is important because you could try to do Uber X, which is actually uh, Zim Ride, Z-Y-M Ride. It's uh, Michael Zim, he tried to do carpooling as a pool, uh, didn't really work because jumping right to Uber Pool, you would have died in the innovation chasm. But the way that the chasm was crossed is specifically doing black town cars for rich douchey people that didn't want a cab line. So it made a small number of people incredibly happy. That's what this diagram is, is it's making a small group of people incredibly happy by doing Uber Black, which really was Uber Cab, and then later on doing Uber X, which is the Weston curve, because a lot of people like Uber X. And the, the breakdowns of crossing the chasm uh, apply very much in also this next slide. When you're editing, you're really leveraging the fifth epiphany, editing CS183 E for edit. The fifth epiphany is all of the awesome sauce that you see on one page right there. It's what Altair Basic is, is the Microsoft of. It's Google on the very popular to a lot of people. It's got the pet food up on top. Now, the cigar portion, the phallic object, the penis-shaped object, is pointing right into the chasm. And if you look at CTC, hashtag CTCFTR, that is 1991 book Jeffrey Moore crossing the chasm. Uh, plot spoiler, he's got a sequence of new books, uh, newer books, newer than 1991, which all apply, which is inside the tornado, uh, and couple other books which were okay which are basically reasons to lecture more but don't really solve anything. Uh, second to last book Escape Velocity which you're fighting gravity. But the book that he hasn't written yet which is why it's the fifth epiphany which I've DJ'd in the Paul Graham essay and the four epiphanies which is Stephen Blank's book Professor Stephen Blank uh, which is four steps to the epiphany, is the fifth epiphany, which is cross the chasm from the right. So the penis object looking thing inserts into the vagina of the chasm. And if you're offended by some of these not safe for work uh, items, they actually are safe for work because uh, the male often goes into the female. And Cross the Chasm from the right is the fifth epiphany. So all the things that you're editing for, all the things that help you cheat death, all the things that help you resuscitate a cadaver and edit that dead startup is encapsulated on this one simple page, which is Cross the Chasm from the right. And this fifth epiphany was written about in a Boston area college. If you just type in Larry Chang, fifth epiphany, fifth, like, fourth, fifth, sixth, four, five, six, fifth epiphany, you'll see the Boston area publication that ran with the fifth epiphany. Encapsulating in trying to do and be a lot to a small group of people uh, helps you cross the chasm. So the point in which we are at right now Let's temporarily set aside the Paul Graham 
essay, which is also the Paul Graham diagram, which he draws most often for founders, which is what Altair Basic is the Microsoft of. Let's remove that for a second, and let's focus on the dotted line chasm. The dotted line chasm is why startups die. They only see the one chasm, they realize that they need to try to jump, and they really don't know about the fifth epiphany. So now that you're editing, you know about the fifth epiphany. Two, they don't know about crossing the chasm from the right. A lot of people have even just skipped reading the 1991 book, Cross the Chasm. The chasm kills startups dead. The mortality, fatality rate is phenomenally high. It's 80%. And my theory is if you went to Stanford Engineering or you understand entrepreneurship as taught to you by Stanford Engineering, why do you still tolerate an 80% failure rate. If you're playing baseball, you're batting 200 20% of the time. 20% is 200, which is 20.0%. And startups dying at a rate of 80% is like living with being a 200 hitter. Why isn't, why don't people bat 700? Why after you go to Stanford Engineering or understand engineering, why are you tolerant of a fatality rate that an econ major faces. You shouldn't. That's what this chasm, that's what this diagram is meant to do, is to, to show you the ephemeral, whimsical nature of you thinking that your startup is the only thing in the world when it's not. There's probably a half a dozen or a dozen or 30 companies that are directly related to it, which is why when repeat founders, serial entrepreneurs, they will talk about how, oh, things happen a lot faster for me. And the reason is this, they realize that there's energy all around you that they then leverage. And so seeing that there is a larger chasm, seeing that your company is fighting and vying for attention. Uh, Justin Kahn talks about how startups aren't trying to battle other startups. That's dotted line chasms trying to bot, battle other dotted line chasms. Startups are in a battle to keep people from not giving a crap. Justin Kahn, that's his pinned tweet. Justin, like uh, the Justins, like Justin Timberlake, Kahn with a K as in Kilo. Follow him on Twitter, he's good. The chasm is something that's got another chasm that surrounds it. Here's the second chasm, it's absolutely not hiding. So the dotted line chasm, we'll go into specifics. Uh, this is lecture 13, this is the super entrepreneurship model. In the next lecture, lecture 14, we're actually going into more expansion of exactly how to DJ up the second chasm. So this chasm, the dotted line chasm is airplane flight, air flight. So what the Wright brothers did was they realized that bicycles had already crossed the chasm. Bicycles had already gained adoption. Bicycles were ubiquitous. They leveraged two wheels, a uh, roller chain, and it would just power the back rear wheel. So they took the profits of selling bicycles and they plowed some of those profits, some of those retained earnings if you went to business school, uh, they some, took some of that leftover money, if you're just street. They took profits, and they invested those profits into coming up with three-plane control. X-axis, Y-axis, Z-axis, three-plane control to co-found a major called aerospace engineering, flying a plane. So a plane is the dotted line portion of the chasm where... Even after a prototype was working, the United States uh, Army, they didn't purchase a working prototype by two Americans, Orville and Wilbur. What they did was they waited till the French War Department made their first purchase. So the Wright brothers did not die in the innovation chasm because they leveraged selling bicycles. And that's the, the edit. That's the engineering mentality of self-funding. They didn't hope for investment from the government, which 
never happened. They didn't hope for investment from the Smithsonian Museum, which didn't even recognize their invention until 40 years later because of bureaucracy and because of doubt. Older people will always doubt the new technology, and this has happened time and time again. Elon Musk self-funded space flight by selling debit cards. Before he sold debit cards, he sold Yellow Pages online. So DJing in the second chasm happens all the time, just that nobody's ever put a methodology to it. Nobody's ever had the, the, the gonads, the giggleberries, the brass balls to tell you, hey, there's a chasm within a chasm, and the Wright brothers actually came up with a new form of venture capital, which is why in this lecture, in lecture 13, this one chasm within a chasm, I'm forking to fork uh, taking this code and then forking it like Stack Overflow, like GitHub. I'm forking this hashtag, CS183E edit, to be CS183VC, V is Inventure, C is Capital. Because the Wright brothers, after they invented flight, after they died, they were given a Bachelor of Arts degree from an Ohio college post-mortem. Meaning after they die, they get a bachelor's degree? Are you high? We should be giving people like the Wright brothers, who were the foremost innovators inside of venture capital for engineering, we should be giving them honorary MBAs because they came up with Cross the Chasm from the Right, even though Jeffrey Moore's book wouldn't be written for another 91 years. Think about that. They've extrapolated 91 years where I just extrapolated the fifth epiphany. So this should be blowing your mind because you should be looking for that other chasm. And I'm not even joking. I might have a joke, jocular tone. I might have an American uh, attitude. I might not, I might offend some foreign people. I'm sorry that uh, your country didn't invite, invent air flight, but the Wright brothers absolutely realized that bicycles funded flight. So the initial diagram was a little bit intimidating with the what Uber cab is this the Uber technologies of. So let me break down some uh, specifics initially with these two diagrams. So I'm going to preview these first two diagrams which is one is uh, what Uber cab is this the Uber technologies of, and also uh, the chasm. Now, the dotted line portion of it, the area directly above, that's where we want to exercise the customer development cycle, the customer development cycle. So what you're practicing is you are practicing uh, in crossing the chasm from the right. You're realizing that there's a an ability to focus and to be liked by a small number of people and that is to to segment and find a specific vertical and that's what that incredibly long larger part of the chasm is meant to to get you to knowledge activate to get you to execute in the larger part of the chasm that sits above the chasm so uh, the smaller chasm so you're literally trying to specifically do uh, Uber, where that, that diagram is what you want to search out for and do, what you want to uh, incorporate into your editing a cadaver, is you want to find what that vertical area is and then execute sales methodologies. Remember, CS183E is an offshoot fork of CS183S. S is in sales. Sales for distribution, sales tracking, getting traction. So you're trying to, to practice by selling something that you initially did not code. That's lecture seven of CS183S is in sales. Is that you want to get practice doing distribution. That's what gua gua guacamole is. is it's 22 recipes that are helping you engineer up some momentum, engineer up a tidal wave of momentum.
by selling at trade shows. Selling things that you yourself did not code is that uber vertical that's on the right portion of that second diagram. Fighting gravity, fighting to get adoption, hoping to go viral, has killed venture-backed startups dead since the 50s. Hoping to get distribution, uh, but getting sucked back because the springboard, which is a double entendre for engineering 245 lean launch pad, you're going to get pretty good boy, Brady's drinking water. Lean launch pad, the springboard just didn't get you to escape velocity. So you don't want to fight gravity and you don't want to die in that area. You don't want to die for engineering 145 startup just because you're trying to make meaning and then not money. Well, in order to make meaning, you're going to have to fund it by having a perpetual promotion machine, a perpetual money machine where you take profits from something that you're selling and you plow those profits back into that thing. And if people aren't buying what you're selling, if people aren't paying you money for those things with some residual money left over, your meaning probably doesn't mean a whole lot to them because they're not willing to pay because they're not getting any value out of it. So that's the, the kind of the bad news downer part of the chasm. So there's two chasms. One of them starts in 2017, this year, and the other chasm starts in the year 2000. So in short, we are just four deployment engineers, and we're just making 150 to 225 as engineers who are technical salespeople selling something that exists. Now, the phrase for deployment engineer, write that down, for deployment engineer, is critical because it's from Lecture 5, CS183B, is in boy. And that, which is uh, how to start a startup, Sam Altman's class, uh, 2013, 14. That's a sequel to Peter Thiel's class, which Peter Thiel came up with, for deployment engineer, which is a salesperson. It's a salesperson who's selling Palantir stuff for deployment engineer. Peter Thiel had a class in 2012 that's called CS183, CS183. And in lecture nine, he talks about distribution. And so that's what CS183 e-edit is an expansion of, and that's why I forked uh, CS183 Lecture 9, CS183B Lecture 5, to CS183E for edit. And that is because being a forward deployed engineer, you're just working in that arrow part of the chasm of customer development cycle, where the technologies that Palantir is selling and promoting aren't just in that little customer development cycle, they're in the multi trillion dollar market of compression algorithms to read people that might commit terrorism or compression algorithm for behavior analyses. That's what a forward deployment engineer is doing, is, is selling Palantir's decision making, selling Palantir's quasi mainframe, uh, number crunching, cloud-based uh, algorithms for making decisions on a, literally a billion different things. That's the huge market. That's what their four deployed engineers who work uh, with the CIA to do is to, to get adoption where Mark McCormick, who wrote What They Don't Teach at Harvard Business School, talks about a four deployed uh, project person by parking a sports agent who bought licensing in the big brand's office. So you're deploying the senior golf tour, which Mark McCormick came up with. You're deploying the senior golf tour by parking a person at NBC, national broadcasting company, who uh, has a sequel company, CNBC and CNBC Sports, parking a person uh, on a desk at NBC, 
deploying uh, the senior golf tour. So these things have happened since forever ago, since before 2000. My mentor passed away in 2003. Some of these things he was deploying uh, in the 80s, the 1980s. So that's this, this one slide is meant to knowledge activate and get you to take action to realize that we are all just technical sales people. And if you're two to five engineers, all you are are doing technical sales on products that you are engineering. So you're changing it ever so slightly, or in some cases, not changing it at all, and just selling and making a commission. Later, when the chief technology officer says, hey, we would love to hook up uh, our cooling tower to be able to tweet when the calcium and magnesium level uh, as far as parts per million uh, spike above 100 which obviously calcium and magnesium are come out of water solution hard water that's why it's hard they come out of solution and they actually uh, scale that's calcium carbonate scale on a cooling tower so if that would tweet, hey, uh, there's calcium building up, that's what we are selling. But the plant manager comes to us and says, hey, uh, is there a way to dose the chemical uh, by hooking up Twitter in the internet of things? Because that's what my boss is trying to do is get me to conserve power and save money on energy and water. You can do that because you're selling Nalco Chemical. You can do that because you're a Ford deployed engineer selling chemical and then the plant manager or the chief technology officer says, hey, can you work into this innovative thing, this thing that I was cooking up in my brain to help me save money on water, to help me save money on energy. That's all we're doing is we're glorified technical salespeople that are making 150 to 225K. That's what that diagram is, is, is it's innovative, but it's innovation that the customer pays for because there's a larger issue at hand that they're trying to solve and save money and make money. This diagram is to emphasize that gravity is working for us because the cigar is dropping directly into the chasm. So we're actually getting momentum and that's where the the effect of gravity working for us, the effect of money and sales and selling has its own momentum. And that's where the momentum of gua gua guacamole. Okay, so what's your initial reaction when you hear gua gua guacamole? Well, some people who are foreign viscerally don't like it because maybe there's not avocados in their region. Gua gua guacamole is the franchise of the, the thought uh, leadership of adding a bunch more steps into one step guacamole. One step guacamole tastes like crap. My guacamole, which is not only metaphorical, it's actually physical. So my guacamole tastes great because I'm adding a bunch of steps by roasting garlic. So gua gua guacamole is a set of 22 street smart business recipes and they're meant to prime the pump. And if you're not an engineer, I'm sorry, but if you are an engineer, then you appreciate priming the pump means you gotta pour water down into the well before the, to prime the pump. It's counterintuitive because you're initially losing a little bit of water. Now, when you're talking about the momentum of sales, which is why I even brought up guac guac guacamole, is you're priming the pump, you are, uh, offering and getting initial sales. And that's how gravity works for us because the initial sales that we make using gua gua guacamole are doing LCRM, Larry Chang reverse rebate model. Meaning your first couple customers, you will fully and 100% rebate them back the money once they use the product, try the product, and then say something good about the product. Let me repeat that, LCRM, Larry Chang reverse rebate model. You get them to buy, try, use, and then give you a testimonial because they buy it, they tried it, they liked it, and then they give you a testimonial and then you give them their money back. Everyone else out there in the marketplace who's trying to cross the chasm, 
they're trying to do it for free or the freemium. Freemium doesn't work. I don't know anybody who does freemium who's had it work. Doesn't work. Larry Chang reverse rebate model. Where did I get this from? Not Larry Chang. I got it from Mark McCormack because he would initially sell, such as the Senior Golf Tour, he would sell something and then say, I will give you all your money back if you say something good about me in the marketplace. Sounds easy enough, right? So you get two positive interactions. The freemium is they bought it for zero, they didn't use it, and they're definitely not giving you a testimony because they never used it. Mark McCormick reverse rebate model, Larry Chang reverse rebate model, is where they bought it, they tried it, they liked it, and they gave you a testimonial. So those things happen in sequence, which is amazing and awesome, because now you now have two positive interactions. One is they bought it, so they got scared, but they're like, oh, it seems kind of valuable. And then they get another positive financial interaction when you actually rebate their money after they do a testimonial. Most of the time they say, oh, well, I love the product enough, they're probably going to screw me on the rebate, but I don't care. And then you rebate them back the money and they're like, holy, oh my God, I can't believe how awesome that is. So that's the ways to reduce friction. That's why that last startup that you're editing died because they didn't have a bunch of these uh, things that leverage gravity, things that prime the pump, uh, ways to generate momentum. That's what CS183 is about. And that's why this is a super entrepreneurship model. So here we're just removing the pretty purple chasm, the dotted line area, where the, the red vertical of Uber is getting us to practice, uh, which is uh, practice selling something that we did not code, which is CS183S lecture number seven. Let me repeat that because you're probably going to want to check that out because these things work in orchestration and in DJing with uh, CS183E lecture also, lecture 13. CS183S lecture 7 is where we sell and promote something that we did not code. And unless your name is Uber or Garrett or Ryan Graves, you didn't code Uber. Uh, but you can promote Uber because they give you uh, 300 bucks to $750 to drive Uber uh, as a referral as a commission. So if you're making sales, you're making $750 per in America, of course. Selling something that you did not code, selling something that you did not promote is the fully legal, fully encouraged Lotus or Tesla, which I said Lotus accidentally because uh, it's built on a Lotus slider. The first car that Tesla, Elon built, was a Lotus slider with an AC Delco motor. So Tesla offers a $3,000 affiliate program. If you own a Tesla and you sell a Tesla, you get $3,000. So I didn't make a Tesla, but I can sell a Tesla. Uh, well, actually, I can't because I didn't buy a Tesla, but Elon has made it no secret that he has an affiliate program for people that own and drive a Tesla, $3,000. So you're going to practice selling in the larger part of that chasm and we're just going to drop the pretty purple smaller chasm and focus on that red dotted line area to get us to practice uh, selling and editing in a larger market. Now let's put the pretty part of the chasm back and add in revenue and coincidentally there's an American Express card where you can get 35,000 SPG points uh, that dovetails into an Uber because Uber and SPG have a, an alliance where you get extra SPG points if you use Uber. Now, the reason that we're adding this back in is this is how entrepreneurship works, where initially you're selling and promoting something else as a technical salesperson, as a Ford deployed engineer, and then the customer who's already paying you money says, hey, 
we need you guys because we're, you're already servicing our account. We need you guys to come up with this custom thing to plug in the Eventbrite API to then go into our CRM, our Customer Relationship Management Software, for live events. Can you guys do that? And that's where the concept of DJ API, DJ like disc jockey, disc jockey API. Easy for me to say, right? DJ. Or orchestrating up and conjuring up momentum from a standstill and providing customer service. That's why these things uh, work because now we're adding the pretty purple portion of the chasm back in to an existing market. And so do you see how gravity is now working for us? Do you see how money is now working for us, not against us? Going back to the Wright Brothers example, getting a person to believe that you'll invent airplane flight, okay, very difficult. But if you're already building a bicycle, literally slightly better and slightly uh, higher quality, which the Wright Brothers were doing because they practiced editing other people's uh, toys. They practiced editing other people's bicycles. They rebuilt their broken bicycles and broken toys to make them better than before. And that's how they initially got momentum is by is by editing and re-engineering other people's work. That's why we're adding the other chasm back on. So two years before Uber had an API, their app could be downloaded to transfer our dog, Amelie. That's just a thing that you could do. Uh, before Uber had an API, they actually, uh, for special promotions, would deliver a Christmas tree. Uh, and that's where you put a Christmas tree in an Uber and it was an external API. Because you're using Uber, but you're using it to deliver a Christmas tree. You're using Uber to deliver your dog, Amelie. That's our dog, Amelie, right there. Kind of cute, right? Tristan Walker did the same thing with Foursquare. Tristan Walker, if you want to Google him, Tristan with a T, Walker with a W. Uh, he would sell and do biz dev for a, the Uber API or the, uh, the Foursquare API. Ryan Graves also uh, sold and leveraged the Foursquare API before he became the founding CEO of Uber, Ryan Graves. Uh, Ryan, traditional Ryan Graves, G-R-A-V-E-S. So he, Ryan, initially leveraged the Foursquare API. So this kind of thing, this crossing the chasm from the right, this is happening and is street smart, but nobody's really called it a chasm within a chasm. Nobody's really called it cross chasm from the right. But that's what they're doing and previous to my curating inside of Lecture 13 CS183E, people just sort of thought and knew about it, and in, people who are street smart intrinsically knew how to do this, but nobody's actually put this inside of a lecture series. And before Uber had an API, you can always use your Amex card to pay for Uber. That's just the definition of Uber, you just take a picture of your uh, SPG Amex, and then Uber then pulls $12 out if you want to take an Uber from 757 Market Street to the Hotel W. In traffic, I guess it's 12 bucks, but okay, so you could use Uber to pay, you can use Amex to pay for your Uber. So these things matter because that's the larger chasm where Uber used to be super small and they grew to be large because they took these stepwise steps. They took these and that's what we're going to do inside of Lecture 13 CS183E is we're going to take stepwise steps that the dead cadaver, the dead, that dead startup refused to take, did not take. And a lot of it is run through uh, credit card lead generation because credit cards are everywhere around us it's reducing friction of money solution you want to sell in here these are my July 17 2012 notes that I took inside of engineering 145 ENGR 145 solution 
Hashtag CH6, hashtag chapter 6, is my mentor in my chapters 6, which is sales. And my mentor is Mark McCormick. What they don't teach you at Harvard Business School is his book. I quote his book in every chapter of my book. And that's the solution is in that lower diagram where under solution you want to sell in the main street area. You want to cross a chasm from the right, which is up above. Uh, the chasm's always killed. It's something that is pervasive, that is well documented, and still to this date in 2017 is killing 80% of startups. Uh, I don't know why it is because cross the chasm from the right, uh, I did in a video in 2000. 13 at South by which is cross the chasm from the right aka the fifth epiphany so you want to practice and sell in that purple hashtagged region which I want to thank Tom Kosnick and Tom Byers July 17 2012 those are my notes and if you look that's exactly how to cross the chasm from the right but I had not yet uh, come up with chasm within a chasm to specifically explain all these succinct little steps. And in the next lecture, lecture 13, we're going to revisit uh, mortality rate. We're going to revisit the customer development cycle, which currently is being practiced in the left part of the chasm. It should be practiced in the right portion of the chasm. And we're going to go over specifically in a workshop and lots of interaction, how exactly to DJ in another chasm so that way when we're editing this cadaver, we're able to connect it up to a larger chasm. I want to stress that this red zone is by far the most dangerous zone to try to practice sales. This red zone is only one pretty purple chasm one pretty purple portion of the chasm just selling to technology enthusiasts. The reason I colored uh, this diagram inside of Four Steps to the Epiphany is that the customer development cycle is currently being practiced on the wrong portion of the chasm. So professional salespeople, they will actually die trying to sell to in this portion of the chasm. There's something called startup death spiral. It's startup death spiral. Google it. I have documented. Here are a bunch of URLs to write down for startup death spiral. These are all Steve Blank blog posts. Grab a pen. I'll wait. bit.ly bit slash s blank 710. S is in Steve Blank uh, B-L-A-N-K B is in boy L-A-N-K 710 bit.lysblank710. That is the definition of startup death spiral. That's when two or three founders hire a VP of sales. Your, once you hire a VP of sales, this has been documented time and time again. Uh, Scott Rafer documents it. Uh, venture backed uh, Todd, his uh, co founder, uh, my blog log. Uh, once you hire a VP of sales, the clock starts ticking on when you as a founder get fired. That's what startup death spiral is, is the danger of hiring a VP of sales. So when we're talking about this red zone right here, you want to then look at the next C blank article, which is also startup death spiral, which is bit.ly s blank 711. Because your VP of sales, they're eventually going to get fired because this red parse portion of the chasm is incredibly dangerous. It's incredibly difficult to sell. And the feedback loop causes VPs of sales to get fired. And once you fire your first one, you are on a ticking time bomb for you as a founder to get fired. And that's why I came up with CS183S. That's why I came up with CS183E for edit, is that you want to practice on a cadaver before you start your own venture-backed startup. The venture money's out there. It's super easy to get. 
but it's also super easy to get fired. And Startup Death Spiral has a next blog post, which is s blank bit.ly s blank 712. So it's 710, 711, 712, and then bit.ly s blank 713. You should be scared that I memorize these because I'm actually tired of founders getting fired because they had to fire their VP of sales. Why did they fire their VP of sales? Because selling on the left portion of the chasm is incredibly difficult. And when you're a founder, page 99, you should be scared that I'm memorizing pages inside of a book that I read like weeks ago. Four Steps of Epiphany, page 99, it talks about how founders, a lot of times their first sales attempt is for a startup that they created. Imagine to pop Imagine trying to pop your cherry by trying to bang a supermodel. I mean, uh, you don't want to start in the big leagues. I mean, if a YC, VC funded company, a lot of times if, they're, if they were baseball players, they would want to bat in game seven of the World Series with the bases loaded with a 3-2 count. I mean, that's you want to practice in a batting cage. You want to practice, like my mentor, Augie Garita, says, you want to put in the practice and you want to gain that muscle memory so that way uh, you increase your likelihood of success. And if you have uh, a failure or a seemingly failure, you should maybe be positive about it because maybe you didn't strike out now when you did just strike out. Maybe you struck out in January where, when you didn't do some of these drills. So I just connected up Coach Garrido from University of Texas, used to be at University of Illinois, with Steve Blank inside of CS183 E-Edit Lecture 13, which is try to practice and try to not die for my sake and edit by avoiding startup death spiral. S blank 710, S bit bitly, S blank 711, bitly, S blank bit dot ly, S blank 713. And I wrote a SQL post, which is bit dot ly, S blank, 714. I wish you lots of luck and the next we are going to be expanding on the actual interaction for finding a larger chasm and revisiting uh, postmortems and expanding on doing customer development cycle via CS183S lectures 1 through 20 but finding the larger chasm, finding just setting aside our little pretty purple chasm and going for a much larger and awesome chasm.